I was in a very dark place when I was just four years old. Yes, you heard that right. At the tender age, when most kids are worried about nap time or what snacks they'll get, I was dealing with some heavy stuff. It's wild to think about, right? Well, let me take you through that crazy journey. I found myself standing on the edge, contemplating something so dark and heavy. I mean, how does a little kid even get to that point? Today, I want to share with you my early childhood struggles and how they led to me getting expelled from kindergarten. It might seem a bit extreme, but there's a lot more to it than just being a naughty kid. It might sound like just a kid's story, but trust me, it was a turning point that shaped everything for me. Growing up, I felt a whirlwind of emotion that I couldn't quite understand. I was surrounded by chaos, constantly anxious, and it felt like I was in a storm I couldn't escape. Besides the fact that there were a lot of house parties, I guess they were house parties, but I'm not sure. I was a child. It was my responsibility to make sure everyone's beer was cold. When someone finished their beer bottle, I got them another one. A few times when no one was looking, I would swallow what was left in the brown bottle. One of those times I heard someone say, look, Shirley is drunk. Isn't that funny? Hmm. I didn't think it was funny. I do not remember a lot about my childhood, but with the memories I do have, that may not be such a bad thing. Most of the time I watched television. Speed Racer was my favorite. I remember one time the doorbell rang and someone delivered a package for me. I opened it up and it was a beautiful porcelain doll. I do not know where it came from or who sent it, but the lady's son that I lived with apparently didn't like that I got it. He picked it up and then dropped it, shattering the head. I tried to pick up the pieces but he kept stepping on my fingers while laughing. Sometimes my arm would be strapped to the bed so I couldn't leave the bedroom. Other times, someone would instruct me to go play outside, mostly at night. A few times I would just run off and hide in a closet. I usually hung out around the backyard. Sometimes I would sit on the front porch. I will never forget the time they gave me what I was told was chocolate, but it was actually X-Lax, which was a laxative. Do you know what it feels like to need to go to the bathroom when you're locked out of the house? Now imagine being a kid who can't express what's going on inside. I was facing emotional turmoil that no one around me seemed to notice. If I decided to leave the front porch, I would first go next door to the family that lived on the left side of us. They were old and really nice. I always got candy whenever they were home. Otherwise, I would go to the ones that lived on the right side of us. I liked her. She was always cooking soft shell tacos on the stove. She would toss a tortilla on the open flame slide it back and forth, you know, warm it up. And every now and then she'd be patting out the flame. She was always telling me, you are going to turn into a taco. And she put a plate in front of me. I did not like Mr. Sasia. I will never forget the first time he asked me, 
if I wanted to see him shed his skin. He then proceeded to ejaculate into a milk carton. It wasn't much longer. I made a drastic choice, something I still can't believe I did at such a young age. I felt that nobody cared and that my life did not matter, which led me to that dark moment. I felt so helpless and hopeless and alone. I thought that the only way to escape was to hurt myself. She had always told me never to put anything into the electrical outlet that did not have a cord and a plug like she was holding when she noticed me watching her plug in the iron one day. Or it will kill me, that's what she said. Despite not knowing why, I lived with a deep, deep sense that I just wanted to die. One day I got a large hairpin, opened it up and stuck it in the outlet. The next thing I remember was flying backwards. I did not die, as you can see, but my hand had black spots all over it. And for a long time, I walked around with one glove on and nobody said anything. There was one time when some woman was visiting, asked about it, and the response they said was, that is just something she does. It's hard to understand how a four-year-old could feel that way. But trust me, I was in a lot of pain. School wasn't an option for me, unlike other kids in the neighborhood. Some of them constantly picked on me. I remember riding a bike down the sidewalk one time when a boy ran across the street and pushed me into a picket fence. Why? I don't know. In another instance, a group of them held me down in the middle of the street, hoping to get me hit by the car that was coming towards us. Someone yelled and they ran away. I just laid there watching the headlights, waiting for the car to hit me. But someone scooped me up as the vehicle screeched to a halt. The scariest thing at that time, or around that time, was when someone picked me up and forced me to look into what they called a casket. I don't know whose funeral it was, but I never want to see another one. A couple of years later, they unexpectedly removed me from that home and I was now going to a trial adoption. This family would care for me since I could no longer stay where I lived. Who were these people if they were not my family? What had happened to my actual parents? I was confused. I didn't understand. I was told to go pack a bag. I went and grabbed my smallest suitcase and picked up my most treasured possession, a picture of me from when I was maybe three, sitting on Santa's lap. I now lived in Hawthorne, California. I had a mom, although she did not seem to care for me because I was not a baby, a dad, and two older brothers who were already in high school. It was the 4th of July, 1973. I was seven years old. I was sitting on the curb in the cul-de-sac that our house was on. All the neighbors were lighting fireworks. I had never seen them before. This was my first time, along with learning how to hold sparklers. 
everything was so loud and bright. It was frightening. And only got worse for me when someone got hurt. It was nothing major, just burns on their hands. But that was enough to make me afraid of fireworks. The pressure to fit in was overwhelming. I remember feeling invisible, like I was just floating through life without any real connection. I struggled to fit in with my peers, which only deepened my feelings of isolation. About two months later, they sent me to school. Let's talk about my first time in kindergarten. I remember those colorful walls and the smell of crayons, but the joy was overshadowed by my fear. Kids can be really mean, and I felt like an outsider, even in my own neighborhood. Being in a trial adoption at the age of seven, I was known as the kid whose own parents didn't want her. I remember walking into kindergarten and feeling like I was about to face a lion's den. The constant anxiety made me act out in ways that I couldn't control. I had never been to school before, but I had heard about it from the kids in my old neighborhood. I was now going to a Christian school. Couldn't be bad, right? It was my first day and it was show and tell. There was this boy who had a baseball mitt and all he talked about was that mitt over and over and over and over. Even after his turn, he kept going on and on about it. I got tired of listening to him and decided to take it and hide it. They claimed it was stealing. I never told them where I put it. The second day, I got in trouble for bringing a club cocktail, which was an alcoholic beverage in a pull top tin. I lied and said I thought it was pudding, which came in a similar size tin. Now, if you're wondering why the family I was with would let me take alcohol in my lunch is they didn't know that I had took it in my lunch. They found out when the school called them. That's when things escalated. I felt so isolated and alone and my actions became a cry for help. I didn't have the words to express my struggles, but my behavior was speaking volumes. For me, it was more like a battlefield. One day things got so intense that I just didn't know how to cope. I didn't really understand my feelings or why I felt that way. I just wanted to escape. Looking back, my kindergarten week was a mixture of chaos and confusion. I lashed out at other kids through tantrums and just couldn't regulate my emotions. The teachers didn't understand what I was going through and the other kids just thought I was the weird kid. I felt like a pariah. Each day was a battle and I was losing. I remember vividly the day I got expelled. It wasn't just a simple scuffle. It was the culmination of my struggles. I was acting out. 
seeking attention in all the wrong ways. By the fifth day, the school had enough after I bit a female classmate because she was standing in my way. She had stepped in front of me and put her arm up to block me. I opened my mouth and clamped down on her forearm and refused to let go. After drawing blood, she had no choice but to stop and step aside. I got expelled my first week of kindergarten because my behavior was considered unacceptable. It was a tough pill to swallow, especially at such a young age. Can you imagine being kicked out of kindergarten? Things were falling apart at home. Dad kept trying to talk me into calming down and not being so rambunctious. Meanwhile, the brothers were trying to keep me occupied and out of trouble. The situation finally got to the point where his wife said, if she does one more thing, she has to go or she was going to leave him. How did I know that stealing the boy's lunch money one day was what she meant by one more thing? Then came that pivotal moment. I can see how those early experiences shaped my life. I wish I could say that I learned it's okay to seek help and talk about your feelings and that those moments of darkness became the foundation for my journey towards healing and self-acceptance. But that is not my story at all. In the end, the trial adoption only lasted six months. The father introduced me to another woman with whom I would live since things hadn't worked out. We met in a Vandy Camp restaurant like I was a package exchange. Shirley, this is Joyce. She is going to be your new mom. If you do not go with her, you will have to go to juvenile hall until you are an adult. He told me that after we sat down at the table Okay, I said, barely giving her a glance. I really didn't care because I was devastated. How could he choose his wife over me? How come I had to be the one to leave? Why didn't she leave? She was the only one always complaining. I knew she didn't want me there because she was always talking about me not being a newborn like she wanted. My only determination now was to find my birth parents because I believed if they just met me, they would love me. This had to be some silly mistake. I had no idea what it meant for my future or how it would shape me. Those experiences in kindergarten became a pivotal part of my identity. I learned to wear a mask, pretending everything was okay, while inside I was crumbling. So that's my story so far. I'd love to hear from you guys too. If you ever face something similar, drop your experiences in the comments below. And if you found value in my journey, don't forget to check out my other videos for more personal stories and insights. Let's keep this conversation going. 
Stay tuned for the next installment of my testimony. Have a blessed day. Jesus loves you.